at such short notice. Mm -hmm. Sharing this press conference with me this afternoon is my colleague, Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, the Honorable Yolat Indar. The singular issue that I propose to address and we propose to deal with is what has essentially become a public concern matter as it relates to the development of a show based facility in the West Demerara area. And more particularly, the removal of mangroves to facilitate that development process. So let me begin by assuring all Guyanese that the PPPC administration takes very seriously the issue of climate change, the issue of flood protection, the issue of ensuring that we have adequacy in terms of structures for the prevention of flooding to safeguard lives and livelihoods. You know, I will recall that it was the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration through a European Union funded project that aggressively pursued mangrove cultivation and the replanting of mangroves as a flood protection mechanism. So the issue of mangroves is one that is embraced by the PPPC and it was while we were in government we ensured the planting, cultivation, and ensure that there should be no really need destruction of mangroves. So I want to put that on the table, our track record where that is concerned is very clear. The second thing I want to establish is that Guyana is now an oil producing country. And as an oil producing country, there are infrastructural developments that are required to facilitate and to properly service what is taking place in our EZ. One such infrastructural development is the establishing of shore-based facilities. The establishing of shore-based facilities. When we came to office, we found a number of applications for permits that were not being addressed or were just blatantly being administratively denied. That was hindering Guyana's development in this sector. We, in keeping with our governance architecture, ensure that in every sector in this ministry, the governance mechanisms were put in place, including the establishing or the reconstituting of the Sea and River Defense Board. The Sea and River Defense Board comprises of every major permitting agency in Guyana. The CHMPA the Maritime Administration, NARI, the NDIA, a 
And the list goes on. They all sit in a boardroom, including, I should say, the EPA is a member of the Seine River Defense Board. They all sit and they deliberate upon applications that come to the board before the board offers its no objections to facilitate development projects. So let me come specifically now to TriStar Development. TriStar Development is a hundred million US dollar proposed facility. A hundred million US dollar facility. It is fully owned by a Guyanese. And more so, a Guyanese from West Demerara, Region 3. This is a Guyanese who have done well overseas. I think today there is an article about him in today's Starbrook News. Who came home and have applied for the necessary permits to help with Guyana's infrastructural development and at the same time providing adequacy for the oil and gas sector and is part of the job creation mechanism. Not to forget, not to forget that one of the things that the PPP see told the country while we were campaigning for the 2020 general and regional elections, elect us and we will create 50,000 jobs. This is only one of the projects. Of the several that will come on board that will provide job creation, this project at both the construction stage and at the operational stage will have a minimum of about 150 jobs. This singular project of about 150 permanent jobs during the construction and then during the operation stage. So, Mr. Passad of TriStar and his company made an application for the operation that is taking place on the West Demerara area. The CN River Defense Board considered this application and offered its no objection. Mr. Passad subsequently after that, no objection, applied and got access to additional portions of land by way of number one, a lease, and secondly, a license. A plot that was leased and a plot that was licensed. There will be a diagram on the whiteboard at the back that I will be able to explain in detail what was the original property, what was leased, and what was licensed. He has subsequently notified since March the CN River Defense Board about the acquisition of the additional properties by way of both lease and license and has sought the way forward as it relates to how to incorporate this in his overall development project. In the interim, he has provided documentation, drawings, engineering designs and everything of how the development will take place and what will be the measures in place for flood 
prevention. Now, in that area where the show base is being developed, apart from the mangroves, there is a sea defense structure by way of a dam. So there's the mangroves, and then there's a sea defense structure by way of a dam. In the engineering design, which is now on the board, all of the red that you are seeing in that drawing represents hard structures that will be built to mitigate flooding and to protect that property and all the properties in the back of it, near to it, or far away from it, from any flooding by way of putting in hard sea defenses. We at the ministry are aware that the developer have in place currently 70 container loads of sheet piles to put in place the necessary flood mitigating structures. So the big issue here is the cutting of the mangroves to facilitate this development. That's the big issue. The big issue is not flooding because the adequacy of the measures, the hard structures to prevent flooding are in place. So the big issue is if we should cut mangroves or don't cut mangroves. Well, let me make it pellucid. Development comes with changes. The entire eastern section of the Demerara River comprises of several structures. Stellings, wire, shore based development. There was a time when all out here were mangroves. The people of West Demerara deserves the same. Development of the Demerara River to facilitate the new wave of development coming to Guyana will mean at some stage mangroves will be displaced. I hear people using the word destroyed because that seems to be more sensitive. Uh, more of a sensitive word to appeal to emotions. Mangroves would have to be removed to facilitate destruction. And if you've been following Guyana, we are talking about the Wales Development Authority. And in the Wales Development Authority, we're bringing in a pipeline offshore Guyana to get all the way up to Wales. Running a pipeline would also mean that you have to move mangroves to facilitate that pipeline getting to Wales to bring development to people and to create jobs and to modernize Guyana. So let me answer a couple of things and then Minister now I know quite have quite a lot to say will go on. I noticed Mr. Ramjitan in a boat with Mr. Harmon today because they are seeking attention, and I'm happy that they are able to get some without creating destruction um, on the streets. They went and they used terms like, these mangroves are being destroyed. Well, look at me and read my lips. I sat in a meeting where Mr. Ramjitan was in charge. He had no time, none whatsoever, to do a socio-economic assessment or any studies to see the impact of the closure of Shower Estates will have on the workers, communities, but he found time today to go in a boat, to go to show the whole of Guyana that the moving man grows. Well, the development that is taking place in Guyana is not willy-nilly 
This is well planned, structured, factored in a context to bring about real world-class development of Guyana. What Tristar is seeking to do, and I, Tristar should come out, and I perhaps they, I should call them out to speak for themselves. But from documentation and things that I have seen, what Tristar is seeking to do is to ensure a lot of the work that is done right now in Trinidad and in Texas could be done right here in Guyana. And that is not something to be sabotaged. That is something to be in, encouraged. The PPPC, in its approach towards the development of the country, have said repeatedly, we will not be obstructionists, we will be facilitating. And we have facilitated and will continue to facilitate developmental projects once it comes in a, a framework where it is properly regulated, sustainable, where there is no danger to life and livelihoods, and where we could see the creation of jobs. And this project fits within that framework. And it is in that context that we granted our no objection in the first instance, and it is that context that we will continue to engage TriStar to ensure that we have the development of this project. I will stop here for now, and my colleague, Minister Indar, will speak, and then we will take your questions. Minister Indar. Thank you very much, Minister Sergio. So, I don't know if you all know, but I do reside in Region 3. I, I was born in the, in the region, and I grew up in the region. First, let me just say that I saw the opposition leader, Mr. Harmon, I saw Mr. Mahipal, I think Mr. Ramjitan and some others on the riverfront. And they were showing on live uh, Facebook feed the area that is um, being leveled and the mangrove is being leveled. Obviously, um, I would have liked for Mr. Ramjitan I would have liked for the opposition leader and the rest of the gang that when they close sh the, the, the sugar rest tape at Wales, if they could have found the time to go and see the workers, the 1,752 workers that were out of jobs over there, if they did go there with the level of interest they went today, I guess they may have been still be in office, but they didn't go. They have 1,500, 1,752 families still out of work. So here is a project that came to this country, to this ministry, for a no objection. Now when C Defense gives, the C Defense board give a no objection, they consider a couple of things for continuous flood management during the project, project cycle. That is something that they, they look at when they give a no objection. They don't tell the contractor, go do as you want, and do as you please. Our guys are on the ground, they're, they're looking at what they're doing. And let me tell you, for a shore base for Region 3, the importance of a shore base for Region 3 is something that will transform Region 3. Right now, what you have is all of the support services coming out of Trinidad to go offshore can be done right here. What you have are four development cycles going on. You have Lisa 1, Lisa 2, Payara, now Yellow Tail is on the table. And you have one shore base at Providence and another one by Financia. There is no more land on this one side to, to give shore base. Where are we going to develop the country? How are we going to make sure that our people in Region 3 get jobs in the oil and gas sector that they've been promised and get work? You have to have development go on that one side. So on the, uh, on the West Coast side, they have these mangroves. They have to be, as Melissa said, displaced, but with what? The risk of mangrove removing, um, the risk that is associated with removing them is as a tool to, uh, against flood protection. The sheet filing that is proposed on that diagram, the 70 containers that the, con that the con uh, contractor has, that the project developer has, 
is to develop and mitigate the risk of flooding. Right? So the shore base in Region 3, there will be more too. Let me just tell you all, the amount of applications that we have and interest that we have, there will be more shore bases in, uh, to be developed on the other side of the river. So you have to expect more, but the displacement of the mangrove comes with the mitigated strategy of putting steel sheet piling to make sure that there's no breakaway, there's no flooding. But I don't want to stop there. We, Mr. Harmon mentioned about we are giving away lands. Our government is giving away lands. This is, there was a gazette in March 21st, 2020. 180 pages of gazette with 45 plots of land being given away by the opposition leader and his government at that time. 45, I can list them out for you. All 45 of them that were given away at the date, three weeks after the election happened. So they accuse us of giving away lands. We're giving away lands. We don't give away lands. We put the lands in developers' hands to develop, to give jobs to people. The people in Region 3, uh, let me tell you about Region 3. Region 3 have a small economy. What? We can't develop that? Who says only all on Region 4 alone must have all the development, all of the shore bases, all of the laid on yards, all of the facilities for waste and so on? Region 3 need development too. So does Region 5 and Region 6 and Region 2 and the rest of the regions in the country. But we have to support the oil and gas sector because the need is great. Only recently Exxon put out expressions of interest for shore base facility because this is needed in the country. So I want to make that clear that there will be projects on Region 3 shoreline because the entire shoreline, just like how it happened on this one side, there is no more mangrove if you check on this one side. There are patches of it. Look at the current shore base that you have at Gisby. There were mangroves there. I remember when those mangroves were being removed. Did you have any flooding there? No, the people went and revet the place with steel sheet piling. There was no flooding, they protect the shoreline. And it's the same thing that's gonna happen across the river. So the misplaced um, thinking that you're gonna get floods going into people's region and scaring people that they're gonna get floods in it is misplaced. And we have to deal with it promptly. So I will just stop there for now, Minister, mm -hmm. with respect to, with respect to um, uh, development. But lastly, I want to talk about right next door to this current development, farther down south. The PAP and your government gave Hopkinson a set of land right by the shore base facility there. So they're giving away land there too, long before we came into government and nothing's been done. After the side. passage of the no confidence motion. N nothing has been done there. No development, it's just people holding the land. Here is it somebody came in, an investor, a hundred million dollar projects in the region. You know what you're gonna get there? You're gonna gotta get sand. You're gonna gotta get lumber. You're gonna get workers. You're gonna get material. You gotta get crush and run. You gotta get a whole host of things to develop a shore base facility. Where it's gonna come from? Right in Region 3. We expect it to come from Region 3 to develop the region. So if we are to develop this country, ladies and gentlemen, we have to, you have to give some. Something you have to give. Lastly, before I give it over to you, I want to say that Guyana is still remains a net carbon sink. The mangrove removal down there does not affect our ability with that front. We are a climate leader. We have a whole host of standing forests. And in the agreement that we had with Norway whatsoever, that agreement, those mangrove removal were taken into consideration. Because you have to have development in a country. So I just wanted to make sure that we dispel, myself and Minister dispel because the sea defense falls under our remit, and we dispel some of these things that are out there this morning. Thank you. All right, Minister. Before I take the questions, right? See if we could look at what is going on on the board so I can show you, if I can get through the back and demonstrate that. Let me just get a, a pass here, please, so that we could understand and we, we, we could see for ourselves. Property, which is transported property. 
It is what the developer owns by way of transport, this whole section here. From here to where you see this red line is what you call the low water mark. Now, this was obtained by way of a lease. And all the necessary agencies granted them no objection for the lease. This section here coming out is they obtained by way of a license. And what they will have to do is to dredge the Demerara River to a depth so that the vessels could be able to come alongside the wharf or your base wherever you want to turn it so that they could be able to do the transactions that needs to take place. Now, this red line shows the developer's engineering proposal, which in our view here is adequate because they will be driving steel piles to the north, to the whole front here, and to the south, and this will all become a hard sea defense protection while providing the services that are required for the shore based development. There is nowhere that flooding will take place with this kind of an engineering operation. So the issue of flooding is off the table. The sole issue that remains on the table is in order to develop this swath of land that has been leased, the mangroves that are here have to be displaced. So the environmentalists and the conservationists, they are the ones who have serious concerns. But like Minister said, this does not interfere with our agreement with Norway. It don't put Guyana at risk in terms of our international agreements and the removal of mangroves here don't put the West Demerara or the local authority area at risk for flooding because there's adequate protection. So I'll take your question now. I'll move up and get the question. So thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Questions? Minister Edgel. Yes. Um, quite a bit you said about the plan that the, the engineering plan that the company has. Has your ministry done anything since you have engineers also to assess this plan? And is your ministry going to be working along with the company as the plans are carried out? Recently, they had a plan was a uh, uh, job was being executed by a contractor of a, a sluice, and that went away. There was flooding on the East Bank. So it's known that if these projects are not carried out in a certain manner, they could have dire effects. Is your ministry, has your ministry looked, assessed this plan from your engineer's point of view? And will your ministry be working with this uh, investor to ensure that it's executed in a manner that there's no damage uh, or danger to Guyanese citizens? Excellent question, Mr. Rodriguez. The CN River Defense Board, the majority of the members are engineers including the, the, the chairman of the board, in case you don't know, Brigadier Beaton himself is an engineer. But it is standard. When the CM River Defense Board offers a new objection, the developer has to submit to the ministry the designs of what they will be doing in terms of structures. Those designs have to be inspected and approved before the developer could go.
go ahead. Right? The unfortunate scenario, and this is to put things in context, is that that process, the applications, the designs, the drawings, and everything are with the ministry at this stage. The formalities have not fully been consummated. And that has been part of the misinterpretations that have taken place, that these people are doing things unknown to the ministry, and they're doing things unknown to the Sea River Defense Board. Right? There is evidence and correspondence to show that the developer submitted since March and in April documentation but what they didn't do until sometime last week was to put in the formalities so the document much of the documentation that was needed was here but the formalities were not completed so that one, was where we had a little hiccup since you said that mr Edgel, one more question um has your ministry expressed to the developer dissatisfaction with them moving ahead without having their formalities in place definitely so and that has been remedied okay. definitely so and that has been remedied and okay. i i don't want to put the developer out to bleach and not acknowledge that the developer felt that when they submitted what they submitted was what was required when because remember they already had a no objection from the CN River Defense Board and they were expanding now to come to the, that section that I just showed you. They put in the diagrams, they put in the necessary specifications. But the formality of a new application or an amended application was not done even though the information was there. And they thought that was adequate. The ministry thought that we needed to get it properly documented and that has been remedied. I, I must say, Minister Edgel, um, for a hundred million project, um, is not like a vendor on the corner and so on. So as much as you're trying to maintain some sort of balance, investors I'm must be aware. Investors must be aware that you got to cross your T's and dot your I's when doing business and in the, Guyana. And the Sea and River Defense Board did not shy away from ensuring that happened. Thank you, Minister. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brown, earlier, sir. How, at the end of the day, do you convince the public that the Sea Defense Board made a professional decision and not come under political pressure? Political pressure? Yes, because the government itself is saying here today to you and your colleagues that this project is so laudable and beneficial to Guyana. So I'm asking the question about that background, whether indeed there is not some sort of implicit political pressure by the people in the political directory for the city defense board to give us no objection. Well, thanks, Dennis, for such a question. If bringing development to Guyana is political pressure, well, then every agency in Guyana is under political pressure because we want accelerated infrastructural, economic, social development in Guyana. The CN River Defense Board, once it was reconstituted, and I issued them with their instruments to operate and give them the charge, government's priorities were outlined. And at that stage, one of the priorities that was outlined is the development of the Demerara area, the whole Demerara River. We discuss salvaging of wrecks in the Demerara Channel to ensure that we could get two-way traffic in the Demerara River. The dredging of the Demerara River to ensure we get bigger vessels with bigger load capacity to come in. Show this development to facilitate oil and gas sector was one of the priorities that was discussed 
with the board. The members of the board of the Syrian Refugee Defense Board are technical people. Technical people that come from various agencies and stakeholders. And the only political directive that the Syrian Refugee Defense Board has received and every other agency that falls under our remit, we are going to work with people to facilitate development and investment. We are not taking an obstructionist approach. So if that is political direction, yes, I have given that political direction from day one, being at the ministry, to every agency and to every board. Could you say, sir, whether the government plans to go back to Parliament to amend the regulations under the Forestry Commission that essentially makes mangroves protected species? It may be something that we will have to examine with the Attorney General legislatively, because the intent of any legislation is to help, not to obstruct. So if we find now that that is a necessity, we will have to look at it. But I can assure you, the law where it comes to the destruction of mangroves willy-nilly, without any adequacy to prevent flooding or to mitigate, still stands. People just can't even burn mangroves. People just can't go and cut down mangroves. But if development, organized infrastructural development, we're going to be building a new Demerara River Bridge. Maybe there might be mangroves in the alignment that might have to be destroyed. Minister Indar indicated that there will be other shore bases. On the West Demerara, yes. And we're not going to apologize to that. Because we want the jobs in Guyana, not in Trinidad and in Texas. So if Mr. Harmon wants to hold up development, he is telling the people of Guyana, let the jobs for the offshore development be in Trinidad, where there are adequacy of shore bases. There are no mangroves to deal with. But Guyana, we don't need those jobs here because we have mangroves. And the jobs are going to come from Texas. So all the people who are talking about local content and Guyanese getting jobs, part of that, if you're going to build new roads, you're going to cut trees. If we're going to be able to transform Guyana, we have to have other quarries. So development comes with a price when you were building the four lane on the East, East Bank. You remember we had to fill up the whole drain with sand? When we were building the four lane on the east coast and we were doing the road widening, remember we had to fill up drains with sand? But we had to put in place mechanisms, concrete drains with adequacy for water flow so that the place is not flooded. So in order to get the wider roads, we lost drains or canals, whichever one it was. Because I think the technical people say they got drained and the irrigation is canals. So we lost some of that. But we put things in place to ensure there's adequacy. And it's the same thing will apply to mangroves. We may have to lose 150 feet of mangroves in a shoreline of 400 feet. But the wider development must be considered an adequacy of protection. And that is what we should look at. Mr. Federal, what, a, what assessment has been done about the potential impact that the removal of the mangroves will have in the fishery sector? Not only this long, but in the future. That, that is a matter for the Environmental Protection Agency. I am not the specialist in that. 
The Environmental Protection Agency sits as a constituent member of the Sea and River Defense Board, but they also grant their EPA permits separate and apart from the Sea and River Defense Board. But, but are we factoring the impacts of the livelihoods of ordinary Guyanese fishermen and the fishery sector at large? In the, in the same breath that you're counting development, and, and the benefits of their needs. Well, I don't know there's major fishing being done in the Demerara um, River with all those um, boats that, uh, and ships that traverse here. Where, when you step out, you, you, mud flats are so far out there. I, I don't know if fishing is taking place there. I mean, you're from Region 3, you can speak maybe, to that. Maybe I could, uh, <laughs> um, I could come in. I know your question was directed to Minister Joe, but on the first question on political interference, as you said, or, or influence of evil, I don't understand how political influence can tell a private investor to spend 100 million US in Guyana. I, I can't say how political influence can tell a private man, you must come and spend 100 million US here. Well, it was the influence to the sea defense board, not the investor. Oh, that's what I'm saying to you. So. The Sea Defense Board, the application came from the investor to the Sea Defense Board. He wants to come here and invest. What is our role as government? Our role is to make sure that all of the T's are crossed and all of the I's are dotted. And as Minister said, Sea Defense comprises not just those agencies. They have regional um, representatives from the regions on the coastline. Right? But to come back to the particular area and if the issue about fishing, that area there, if you check the, the bathymetric survey of that area, is about three and a half meters depth. There is no kind of massive fishing is done there or anything. Um, so to say that it will affect uh, um, the fishing sector, but what we have to consider then is, is if you want to talk about the fishing sector as a, uh, as a separate economic um, um, drive in the country, and if you're saying oil and gas development is displacing that, if that is the connotation behind the question, um, one, we can address that question to the EPA directly, and they will give you an impact that they've measured before they give you no objection to the, pro to the project. That is one, one, one area. Two, is that the fishing sector, most of the fish that we get for commercial purposes and consumption, they are they, they, they come from trawlers and so on, and these fishing boats are often the Essequibo and the Amarani number 66. Six. So this project is not um, in those particular areas, it's more inland, right? So I, I, I understand the merits of the question, the, the overarching the thought, the thousand feet view of the question, but with this particular project, I don't think that this, the impact is material enough to say, no, don't go ahead with it. Right, I believe that we have to take the, the area that this project is, is with taking place and the geography of the area into context. So my, my question is basically not only confined to this project, but given what was said earlier that in the future more mangroves will have to be removed, and in light of what the, the government had said back, I think in somewhere in the 29, 27, 27 in the policy that mangroves are critical to the fishery sector as far as habitat is concerned. So that's the context of my question. So it's not confined to this alone. Right. Okay. It, is, it is a matter that will have to be continually examined, but I want to envis all of us to envisage. Starting from here, just behind me, where the Post Yard has its headquarters. Going all the way up to Friendship and probably further up now because development is going all the way up to the docks. <laughs> on the east side. <coughs> that is how the west side would eventually be looking. That is how the west side would eventually be looking. And you know, the big picture is that there will always be a give and take situation. We have a real sector in Guyana called oil and gas. And Guyanese must benefit from that. We must benefit from that by getting gas to power the generators so we can get cheap electricity at about 10 cents or lower for kilowatt hour. We must be able to get downstream 
oil and gas facilities at Wales, we must be able to get industries that are creating jobs and Guyanese must benefit in the overall. So governments have a responsibility at times of making tough decisions and we don't have the laws of the Medes and the Persians which cannot be changed because circumstances change and we may need to look and see where there is need for adjustments to facilitate what is taking place at a particular time. I was, I was telling the uh, travel agents uh, last week, part of their licensing obligations is that they have to have a safe that weighs, I think, several tons to store travel tickets. So if a man comes now to me to a license a travel agency, do I send an inspector to inspect his safe? It's a waste of time because tickets are now electronically done. So the regulations will have to be adjusted to ensure that in the issue of the electronic ticket, the customer, the client, is safeguarded as against a ticket just being stored in a heavy safe where people can't steal it. So we have to make the necessary adjustments. And the Attorney General will have to examine that. Minister, yes. one more question. Um, in light of the fact of this press conference, the fact that we have only heard about this situation from the opposition leader and his um, partners going and seeing mangroves cutting down, and the fact that your government, you have clearly said the intention is to ensure that shore bases, more shore bases come together and the whole uh, western side of the Demerara River will be occupied. Do you think it would be wise to advise companies to be very open with the people of the communities that they're planning to do business in, in light of transparency and an open approach that your government has been touting, do you think it would be better for the communities and the people at large in this country here from companies who are going there, they show the impact assessment to the people, they talk to the people in the communities and let them know that we are coming here, we have come together to do business, we're going to be creating jobs, this is how we will affect you negatively, positively, and otherwise. Don't you think that is something that government should be looking Mr. at? Mr. Rodriguez, as the minister responsible for this sector, I take full responsibility for what you've just said, and the blame stops with me. Perhaps we needed to do much more in terms of public education, and I would like to admit that, because even when this matter first appeared in the newspapers and, and so on. Perhaps we should have been more proactive, but let me tell you, I treated it as work being done. Every day we are building things, giving permission. Things are happening. People are writing for New Year's trips. People want to bring in planes. People want to build shore base. People want to be able to get uh, a private development going. The whole chari charity front, people want to build their station, everywhere people want. Things are happening. So I believe that as minister, this is start a lesson that we should do more in terms of engaging and publicizing. But not to say I am fully aware the Neighborhood Democratic Council played an important role in offering no objection to this project. The NDC, I'm aware of that. Any other questions? Um, Minister, how soon will the steel piling and structure be completed, considering that the mangrove has already been cleared? <laughs> I don't have the work plan in front of me to say five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, or whatever the case is. But in order for the steel while driving and the kind of the better term is used, I guess repetment. In, in order for that to be done, the trees got to be moved so that the machines could get in and get the work done. So that is something that is going to be ongoing. 
once all of the designs and everything is agreed upon with the necessary inspections and the rest of it. And, 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 and let me just say, I've, since this matter come to the public, I have spoken to the chairman of the City Defense Board, I've spoken to the secretary of the board, and I've spoken to the chief seat and regular defense officer for them to advise me, to brief me, and to tell me what are the particular concerns that they have and what are the issues that needs to be addressed. And they've all said to me the adequacy of flood protection. And there's a commitment from us as ministers and a commitment from the board that any development of any show base, the adequacy of flood protection is a key factor and will be addressed at all times. And if during the construction phase something happened, well then the developer will have to take the risk and take the responsibility for compensating. We just had a situation with uh, Little Diamond and the Minister of Agriculture have said that the contractor should compensate the people and I support it. I went there and I saw what happened. The people brought it to the local people's attention, to the operator's attention. The dam can't stand up and it goes up the people. And when the water break, well, the wee hours of the morning, then we are scrambling and people blame the government. But the local people who knew the conditions under which they lived for years pointed out ahead of time. And that is why when we do government projects, we give out the unpriced bill of quantities to the communities, the NBCs, the RDC and local part, the CDCs and the local stakeholders. So they must be able to look and see what needs to be done. And if it is not being done, they could contact us and we could ensure the enforcement. But more needs to be done in, in, in that regard. But let me just add to a minute, Sir. Remember what you're looking at there. For you to reach Corpino to put the sheet pile, you have to first excavate the slush. So as you excavate and you reach the hard Corpino, then you know the, 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 the length of the sheet pile, and so then you put them in, in phases. So, right? So, I mean, it's a very important question, but that will be done at the speed of the, will be going along with the speed of the project to make sure you sheet pile the thing. Because you don't know, sheet pile just like that. You gotta excavate, sheet pile, and then you put the hard material as, as Melissa was saying, you know? De de depends on what the contractor sees over there is this mixture of um, backfill, the mixture of how he's gonna put his backfill. It depends on um, what they see from a contractor standpoint, but that is done in the process to bring it along. So my closing words will be, I invite Minister Harmon, uh, Mr. Joseph Harmon, as head Minister Harmon, and the opposition leader, and Mr. Ramjitan, and all the environmentalists and people who are concerned about the environment, to partner with us for Guyana's development. Don't let us be prophets of doom. Where there are concerns, raise those concerns with us and we will address them, or we will have them addressed. But what we want is a Guyana that all of us will be proud of, where we all can benefit from. Thank you very much. Thank you.